Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I have a fantasy romance reading vlog for y'all. Happy fantasy romance February everyone! I love fantasy romances so much and so I just knew this was the perfect opportunity to film a fantasy romance reading vlog. I have quite a few books on my TBR list um, but these are just options for me. Um, so I will not be getting into all of these books, but, um, I'm excited to read like every single one of these. So I feel like any of the ones I pick will just be amazing for this vlog. If y'all would have watched my alien romance reading vlog that I had last month, I really want to do the same thing where I pick one book at a time. I don't have a set TBR. So this is just a list of options I can choose from, but I don't have to choose from this list. This is just a guide for me to see like if I don't know what to pick, I can refer back to this. You know what I mean? So this is not like a set in stone TBR. They're just books that if I don't know what to read, I can pick one of these up. So I don't have a set TBR for this, um, but I do have a book that I would really love to start out reading and then we will go from there. So the first book that I would really like to read that I have the audiobook waiting for me currently in Libby, it's currently checked out, is What Lies Beyond the Veil by Harper L. Woods. I think this is the pen name for an author. I think Adelaide Forrest is maybe... It. I've never read her books under that name either um but I've heard really good things about this series and I've also heard not good things about this series so we'll see how this goes some people have referred to it like relating to it as like Akatar-esque so we'll see I don't want to like that has, that's big shoes to fill in my brain so <laughs> we'll see all I know about this is the I think it's kind of like Akatar where there's like a wall where humans are on one wall and Fae are on the other wall. And then the wall in this book f breaks down, like collapses. And I think Fae are out to get these humans. And um, I think the heroine is like roped into that. And the hero saves her from a certain situation. That's all I know. I really like going into fantasy romance books as blind as possible. So we will see what I think about this one. The audiobook, let me see. The audiobook that I have is on Libby and it is 13 hours long. And I think my Libby is also getting the other books in the series, so it won't be for this vlog. I won't read all these books for this vlog, um, but maybe in the future, if I like this one, I can read the other ones. But I got this at Barnes & Noble, um, like on a whim, like months ago, because I saw an indie romance at a Barnes & Noble, so I, I had to pick it up, okay? I had to support the author. So um, we'll see what I think about this one. And that's the book that I'm gonna start out reading, but I do wanna mention the other books that I have physically that I do want to prioritize so we'll see if I get to them I'm not saying that I will but these three books are other fantasy romances I have not read yet that I have on my TBR also the other C.L. Wilson book over there is on my TBR too that I have physically that one's called Queen of Song and Souls um that one's on any plate it's 14 hours it's the fourth book in her fantasy romance series I love it's so good um so uh that one is also top on my priority but we'll see if I get to it and then these three are also on there this one is um a land of never a night by Lily Archer I got this at Wanderlust and this is a Peter Pan retelling this one is the bridge bridge kingdom by Jan Danielle man I'm not speaking correctly Danielle L Jensen um this is a romance I'm pretty sure where the heroine is a princess but she's also trained all of her life for when she gets married to kind of like be the assassin for her husband so like she needs to marry to kill whoever her husband is but I think she ends up falling for him I don't know I've heard good things and the audiobook for this one is available through audible like because I have audible and then this hunky doozy I have not read this one yet this is from Bullet and Ash by Jennifer L Armitraub I own this audiobook. How long is it? It's like 22 hours, right? 20 hours long, 20 hour long audiobook. Um, but I think this has to do with like vampires or something. Like I could not tell you what this book is about, even though it's been on like everyone's like book talk, YouTube, Instagram page, like it's everywhere. Do I know anything about it? No, but I know people either love or hate this series. So we'll see. But then again, if people love and then hate Akatar and I love Akatar. So we'll see. This book is very chunky. So we'll see if I can get to this by the time this vlog is gonna go up for me. Um, but these are just like possibilities that I have physically. I do wanna prioritize my physical TBR. But first, we're gonna go read this book. So I'll check in with you whenever I get a head start on this one. I have finished my first book for this reading vlog. It's technically a novella, but it's fantasy romance. So I thought I wouldn't include it in this video. I ended up reading The King of Hell, which is one of Grace Draven's short novellas. It's actually her first ever published work, which was super interesting relating it to the Grace Draven we know and love today. I believe this book was written sometime around 2005, around 
that time period. And um, I believe she wrote The King of Hell for a short story submission. Um, and she ended up winning, I believe, in like the fantasy category. I can't remember, but it's at the beginning of this book. And also, I want to mention, you can't just buy this book, I don't think. You can't get it on Amazon. You can't buy it anywhere. The King of Hell by itself doesn't exist. You have to read it in the anthology called uh, Fire of the Frost, which is a short story collection with Dorinda Jones, Jeff, Jeffy, Jeff Kennedy, Amanda Boucher, and Grace Draven. So the four of them, those are four fantasy romance authors. I need to check out the Amanda Boucher book that's in this anthology. Um, but I saw this anthology in my Libby. Um, I was able to get this as an ebook through Libby, and that's the only place you can read The King of Hell. So be aware of that if you're like, I can't find it anywhere. It's because it's only in this anthology. This little novella though is about 50 pages in and of itself. I only read this short novella when I read this anthology. When I was reading this book, I definitely saw the ode to what will later become Radiance. There were many similarities and I feel like many things that Grace Durbin was playing with to hopefully one day write a book called Radiance. There are many differences between The King of Hell and Radiance. I just saw many similarities, like a few similarities and little nods to what will eventually be that book because I've read that book so often. Like that book is ingrained in my soul. <laughs> and so I, I was reading this being like, I can see how she weaved this later into one of her other books, you know? Castile in here, she is of a lower class. She, this is fantasy realm with royalty, all that jazz. So her best friend though is a very high standing lady. They are best friends. Her best friend is actually betrothed to this king who has been cursed. His name is Dorianus and he was cursed, I believe in the womb. So you can kind of like see from the cover, he is pale white, like as white as snow, white hair um and he I think has like magical powers to him and the heroine's best friend is absolutely terrified of him um but the moment that the heroine sees doriana she's like that is the most stunning man i've ever seen in my life what are you talking about but her best friend is still petrified she marries him the the her best friend and the hero get married even though the whole time doriana and castile are like falling for each other and there's even a scene where he is being whisked off to his land after him and her best friend got married and he like kisses Castile's hand to say goodbye he's like you would have made a great queen but there's nothing he could do because it was written in stone it was a treaty he could not get out of and things just go from there that's all I want to say um it's definitely not my favorite Grace Draven I did give it four stars I feel like her writing has always been beautiful. Same with C.L. Wilson. Those two authors for me, their writing has completely stood the test of time. All of these years for all the writing of fantasy romance, those two fantasy romance authors, they are stunning writers. They started out as stunning and they just wrote more beautifully as time went on. There were certain elements I did not like in here. Please be aware of death of a loved one um, is a trigger warning in here. And I do feel like some elements could be expanded upon. There are a few other novellas by Grace Draven I haven't read yet. But like two of them, I can't find anywhere. Like anywhere. And I'm so upset. Like I came across this one randomly because I was flipping through the um, anthology that I saw in Libby, looking at all of the grocery room and stuff that was on my Libby. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is one of the ones I've been trying to find. Hopefully that will happen to the other two I have not been able to find yet. The two books that I'm currently reading are both fantasy romances as well. I did start with Lies Beyond the Veil by Harper L. Woods. I am like 35% of the way through this book. And I think, I don't know, I think we just met the hero. I don't like romances where it takes forever for you to meet the hero. For the two to get, like, it took over almost 200 pages for these two to meet. It's like, I, I for romances, what do you want in romance? You want the romance. So why do you wait 35%? For them to even meet each other. A lot of people have been kind of saying this reminds them of Akatar. I can see that but I also cannot. <laughs> the main similarity that I see is that this is a fantasy romance world, a fantasy world, where there is a wall or a veil that separates the fey realm from the human realm and in this book the veil falls and fey are out to get these humans, certain humans, because when the wall falls Apparently these marks can show up, I think, on someone's neck that tells them if they are fated mates to a fate. And so other humans, when they see that you're covered in these marks when the wall falls, they immediately you. 
because they don't want the Fae to gain power at all. And they know that a fated couple can be like an ultimate power source. And so they're like, oh, we're off on you, we're off on you, we're off on you. So the heroine here, um, after much abuse, like her whole entire life, since she was seven, she was basically groomed by this disgusting old man since she was seven years old. And when she refuses him, he offers her up as a sacrifice to this thingy-mabobber I don't want to get involved in. Like, I don't want to go too much into because it's hard to explain. It's a lot. But basically, while she's almost getting sacrificed, the veil falls and these marks appear on her neck. And she realizes she has a faded mate amongst the Fae and she is terrified. So her and her brother are trying to escape these people chasing them. And that's the point that I'm at. And the heroine bumps into someone. I don't want to say any more because I don't want to spoil anything. But man, 30% of this book was about the heroine just being totally abused and used by this gross old man. And I'm like, I wish that was just shortened. Like, I don't feel like that needed to be that long. I felt like we got the severity of her situation and maybe like a third of that page count. So I didn't see the point in just like repeating, 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 repeating the same thing she was going through. I'm just like, I understand. It's not adding anything else. I'm kind of procrastinating this book because I'm not necessarily loving it right now, but we'll see. I might change my mind. Um, I'm going to read, listen to this book while I do some coloring. And I think I have like two Etsy orders I have to do. So I'm going to do those. I'm currently beta reading a book also for Charlotte Swan. It's um, captured by the Orc General. I'm on Charlotte Swan's beta reading team. I have been reading this one. I'm to page like 100. And so I really want to finish that today, but I can't talk about it. It's a beta read. I don't know if Charlotte Swan's going to add or eliminate anything else. So I'm just going to mention that I'm currently reading this. It's also a fantasy romance book dealing with an orc. It's the story between an orc, a romance between an orc, and one of the characters we met in book one in the series. So you can read that book. That book's currently out. That one's called Taken by the Dark Elf King. I think that's the title, right? That one's really interesting. So um, you can read that one if you want to know more about Charlotte Swan's writing in this world. I'm going to go do some things. I have to edit some videos today. So I got to go do all, all the things and read. I'm so excited to just like have this weekend because um, it's President's Day on Monday. And so I don't have to go to work. So I have an extra weekend day. Bless, bless, bless. Let's talk about this book. <laughs> this is What Lies Beyond the Veil by Harper L. Woods. Also, yes, there are no sheets on the bed, no comforter on the bed, no blanket. Um, It's sheet washing day, so <laughs> bear with me. Um, So this book, uh, I wanted to read this book because a lot of people told me, or just people said in general, that this book gives Akatar vibes. After finishing this book in full, because throughout the book, I was like, eh, I don't know how this gives Akatar vibes. Not really. Like, that's a kind of like big shoes to fill for me. When I reached the end of the book, I was like, okay, I can see some nods to Akatar. Not nods, I don't think Harper L. Woods was specifically trying to nod to Akatar, but I can see where people found similarities, okay? I think I talked about like the bare bones of the summary of this book. This is about Astraea, who is a human woman who lives on the human side of the veil, which is like the wall separating the humans from the Fae. She has been abused since she was basically seven years old by kind of like, I feel like the governor. It's not, he's not called a governor, but it's kind of like the governor of this village that she lives in. He has been basically grooming her since she was seven years old. I'm going to try and be as simple as possible with the summary because everything could be a spoiler, honestly. But at a point in this book, um, the wall, the veil falls. And um, people are terrified because that means Faye are going to come get humans. While Australia and her brother are running away from these people chasing them, they end up taking shelter in a barn and there they meet the hero of the story. His name is Calum and he is one of the marked like Australia. So the main reason why Australia and her brother are running from these people is because when humans are mated, faded mates to a fae, these tattoos or marks appear on their neck and on their body. Um, and that indicates to people that they have a fate and mate. Their fate and mate, I believe, will have like the same marks on them too. Um, and so humans want to kill the humans who are fate and mates because fate and mate pairs are very powerful. So she's running away from a bunch of these people trying to kill her because when the, vo when the wall falls, she sh like these marks start appearing on her. Um, so when she meets uh, Calum, he's like, look, I have marks on me. I'm not gonna hurt you. I am also marked, so we gotta figure out how to save ourselves. Like we're gonna team up and like figure this out. I did not love this. It's just so like mediocre to me compared to C.L. Wilson or Sarah J. Mass or um, Grace Draven. Like this, 
like doesn't hold a candle in my eyes. <laughs> it's because those authors, their world building is fantastic. The way they're able to convey and write about fate and mate pairs is everything. I'll give a little bit of my thoughts about the book that's not spoilery and then we'll get into spoilers. But one of the main things I didn't like about this book was the fact that I did not see how the couple fell in love with each other. I want a romance book to show me little by little how these two characters fall in love with each other. What was the reason? What were the reasons? How did they fall for each other? What was the reason? It felt like in here a switch was just flipped like from the moment the hero and the heroine meet he's like you're mine she's like oh this guy is claiming that i'm his i must be his like why do you like him why do you care for him i literally saw no no reason as to why he was in love with her and why she was in love with him like zero like i don't understand i did not see it at all the world building was like not as detailed as i would have liked i was confused <laughs> Um, but not in a good way because I feel like with SJM's book like you're confused but in the end it all makes sense it all makes sense this one didn't I'm gonna talk about spoilers now so if you want to stay and listen there's gonna be a spoiler tag up here if you uh, want to jump ahead to when this little icon is gone I found the plot twist of this book to be so transparent and not a plot twist at all for me which is something I don't like I want to be surprised I want to be shocked if you've read Akamath, like I want to feel that way. Like I think that's what this book was trying to convey with the way that that whole secret was revealed in Akamath. I think the author was trying to make that present in here. No, I do not feel the same way because it was so blatantly obvious to me. <laughs> also, the many of the heroines, like friends and family, die in this book. Do we see any grieving? No, like no grieving. If you lost your brother your brother dies literally right in front of your face no no grieving you go and like search for him for like a few pages then you're done like in this book i feel like she should have expanded on like her feelings of grief like it doesn't just go away like the day the brother dies like it just doesn't go away and I feel like that's what happened here. Same thing with like, you should be grieving your mother. You'll probably never see your mother again. And for someone who claims to grieve so deeply based on her father's death at the beginning of this book, like, you did not grieve very deeply for me. Honestly, to me, sorry. <laughs> I know I said before, I don't understand how the two fell in love with each other. I get there's like a faded mate aspect involved in here, but that didn't even like help it in any form or fashion for me. Okay, that's me. I just had to talk about a few of my spoilery thoughts for people who care and who either don't care about being spoiled or have already read the book. So I don't think I will be continuing on with this series. I think I'll just read about like spoiler reviews on one certain aspect of this book that I'm kind of like curious about. But other than that, I don't think I'll be continuing and I'm probably going to unhaul this book, sadly. I just feel like these characters are so one-dimensional and I don't understand how the two of them fell in love. Like, at all. No, but I didn't care for the hero. Don't, don't, didn't like him. Didn't really care for the heroine either. Um, so I'm going to give this book, I think I'll be generous and give it a 2.5. You know, like it wasn't bad, but it wasn't great. So... I think 2.5 is my rating. I just now want to like go pick up like a Seal Wilson book or something. Like I need to pick up something I know I'm going to love because the author is fantastic. It's just so different and difficult now to get into new fantasy romances for me because I'm so used to the beautiful prolific works of some of the best fantasy romance authors ever. And I want to read more fantasy romance authors. It's just like sometimes the writing just cannot hold a candle to me, um, which is nothing wrong with that. Like I should not be comparing author's works it's just hard for me to love something that I know could be better you know um like there were so many things in here I wish I could change <laughs> or I wish I could delete or expand upon um it just makes me sad like I don't want to feel that way about a book I don't want to feel like I need to change something about a book when I read the book like I want to love it with my whole heart and chest and that did not happen with this book and whenever I read a Grace Draven or a C.O. Wilson or a Sarah J Mass or um like an Amanda Boucher or a um a Mila Vane book like like they their worlds are perfect the way they're able to craft their worlds and they're able to write about them like 
I want to be put in the world. Like, I want to be there. I want to be friends with these characters. I feel like these characters can jump off the page with their real people. Sadly, some of these new fantasy romances that I'm reading don't hold a candle. And it's making me upset. And so that's why I read the same fantasy romance authors over and over and over again is because their books, I know what I'm going to get. I know that I'm going to have an amazing time and they're probably going to be five stars. And I don't like reading new authors sometimes because I am always scared that I just won't like their writing. And then that's just like an, a new another author on my no-no list. And that makes me sad. If you have any newer fantasy romances that have come out in the past couple of years that you think stand the test of time that are absolutely fantastic, please leave them in the comments, please. I want to find new fantasy romance authors. I do. It's just so hard because some of the new ones just aren't vibing well with me. And I don't know why. I don't know why. Okay, I've been talking for quite a long time, so we're gonna jump into another book. This dog is after one thing and he won't leave me alone until I do it, right? Here. He's a little stinker, he's a little stinker, a little stinker. Oh, I love him. Okay, um, I have picked my next book. It is Fortuna Sworn by KJ Sutton. And I am surprisingly really enjoying this one. I feel like this one is giving me more Agatar vibes than the previous book I talked about. And I'm not mad about it. Like, I feel like the only vibes that I'm getting is this fairy world that part of this book takes place in. It's giving me a lot of Court of Nightmare vibes, if you know about the Court of Nightmares. Like, it's giving me that. Like, it's like the whole fairy realm is like the Court of Nightmares, which is so interesting. This fantasy romance is kind of unique because it does take place in our world, kind of. So we don't know, humans don't know, that there are magical, paranormal fantasy creatures that live amongst us. Um, There's like fae, pixies, um, shifters like the whole gambit there are multiple throughout the human realm that no one knows about like humans don't really know about them our heroine here fortuna she is one of the rarest magical creatures that there are they're almost extinct and she's called a nightmare she's able to when she touches someone's skin like skin to skin able to figure out what their deepest darkest fear is and to kind of use it against them create an illusion so like if you're scared of spiders she will make spiders appear all over your body and you will basically almost die of fear. Kind of like the character from Stranger Things. There's a character like that in Stranger Things. I don't want to spoil it, but very much like that. So for the past two years, she's been trying to find her brother. Her brother has gone missing and she has no idea where he is. One day when she's in a little bit of a bind, this dark, mysterious hero pops out of nowhere to come and save her. After he saves her from the situation, he keeps popping up where she is. He pops about her place of work, pops about her home, and she's like, what do you want? And he's like, I know where your brother is. I can help you find him in exchange for something. She's like, oh my gosh, yes, I will do anything for my brother. What do you need? And he wants her to become his wife or his mate, which was very interesting to me and like kind of surprising because I wasn't really expecting that so like quickly, that quickly and like we're at the beginning of this book and that happened so fast. And so they do get married, they become mates like on chapter like three or something. And so he has to take her to the fairy realm which is very similar to kind of like the Court of Nightmares. So it's very interesting. Just his character in general, I am very intrigued by. He's giving me a certain character in Akatar vibes. Okay, he's giving me his vibes uh, because he's very stoic and I think he's putting on like a facade on the outside, but on the inside, he's doing something. He like has a mission of some sort on the inside and no one knows about it. And so I'm really interested in his character. I'm also really liking Fortuna. Like she is kick butt, wants to save her brother so badly and will do anything to save him. So I'm actually really enjoying this one. I wasn't expecting to because again, it's another new author. This fantasy romance is kind of newer compared to other ones that I've been reading recently. I do wish we got the hero's perspective in here, but the book is like, the series is called the Fortuna Sworn series. So I don't know, like it's kind of like Akatar in that sense where everything's in Feyre's point of view. So, you know, I'm not going to be mad about it, but I just, part of me wishes that we got the hero's POV, but I think part of the appeal of this book is you don't know what's going on in his head and you don't know what he's planning. So I'm actually thoroughly enjoying this one and I can't wait to read more. I have finished Fortuna Sworn by KJ Sutton and I surprisingly really enjoyed this one. This is the first book in a very long series. I think there's four books out about the same like couple. Like that's the main focal point is the couple. Something I loved about this book is that the author made sure to like to indicate these characters are not in love with each other after one book. Like no. <laughs> and so I really liked that because that was way different than What Lies Beyond the Veil. Because like in this one, 
there is no reason why the two of them should be in love because they don't know each other at all. I'm assuming the other books in the series is gonna expand upon that. And um, I think I'm gonna give this four stars. Um, I don't wanna go too much into it because I don't wanna spoil anything because I feel like fantasy romance books can be like heavily spoiled and I've already talked about this book like somewhat. But there were just things I wish were talked or delved into more. There's kind of like a trial part of the book that is reminiscent, not reminiscent, similar, <laughs> similar to um, the Akatar trials, if you know what I mean. And so that really reminded me of that. And I felt like the trials and the conflict and the big like climax of the story kind of happened too fast for my liking, especially the main like battle conflict that was happening in here. Um, I felt like that happened too fast. I was like, oh, it's over. Like there's not more. That's my only like gripe, but I overall really liked the characters. I liked delving into Fortuna's mind of her being a nightmare. Like that was really interesting. There are these other characters that were popping up that I was like, ooh, you sound interesting. I can't wait to learn more about you. There's one guy in here. I am really like, hmm, hmm. <laughs> I won't say anything else. Um, and I really want to know just more about her brother because I don't want to spoil anything, darn. Um, but things about her brother that popped up at the end, I just want to get more into his mind and figure out like what happened to him. That's all I'm going to leave you with because I don't want to spoil anything. But I overall really enjoy this and I actually look forward to reading the other books in the series. I have one last book that I'm going to read for this video. It is The Fae King's something by Jamie Schlosser. Um, I forget the title. It's the faking something. Um, but this is right now, I'm like 50% of the way through it almost. This is actually Captor Captive with Faded Mates. Third book in the series. I've really enjoyed book one and then book two wasn't necessarily my favorite. So I'm really hoping I like book three. I've heard really good things about book four. So I'm wanting to continue mainly to get to book four. Our hero in here figures out who his Faded Mate is. She's been kidnapped from Earth and brought to the Fey realm. Um, and finds her just to realize she does not feel the same like faded mate effect that he does. And he's like, what is going on? Why is our like faded mate bond broken? Like, why can't she feel anything? And um, something happened with like a curse to where like he feels her bond feelings as well. And so he has like double the effect of a faded mate bond while she has nothing. And so she's starting to fall in love with who he actually is instead of just falling in love with someone because they're faded mates. So I know that some of my viewers out there don't like faded mate romances. And so you might like this one because our heroine technically is faded mates, but she's not feeling the effects of the mate bond at all. So she's falling in love with him on her own merit based off her own feelings. And even the hero's like, she's falling in love with me. She likes me. <laughs> so I'm overall really enjoying this so far. It's on its way to like a four star. And right now it's like captor captive because she wants to go back to earth because she like doesn't feel the effects of the mate bond and he's like how can you not feel this and so he's kind of like keeping her in the fey realm when she doesn't want to be there <laughs> so i'm going to uh finish reading this one and then i'll check back in with y'all to wrap up this fantasy romance vlog okay <laughs> i am here to wrap up this vlog um yeah sorry i'm putting that back up i feel better about that um so uh, I'm here to wrap up this vlog because I finished my last book for this reading vlog. Man, I don't know the I don't know the title of this book. I do not. Uh, I feel like every time I talk about this book, I'm like this book by Jamie Schlosser. Oh my gosh, here come the dogs. Oh, hello. Yeah, yeah. Bye. There's my parade. Yes, hello, hello. I'm making a pit stop to say hi. Goodbye. Don't need to like pick a level. Pick a level. Pick a level. Anyway, I finished this book and I'm gonna give it four stars. I really liked it. Um, it's kind of like captor, captive, faded mates. She doesn't really feel the mating bond though. So he kind of like forces her to stay in this fantasy realm with him. And that's kind of it. Sorry, I'm like in a lot of pain. You probably can't tell because my glasses, but I woke up with a horrible sigh this morning. <laughs> like, oh, it hurts so bad. So I'm about to go put a hot compress on it, but I want to say I finished this book and um, a nail also popped off, so I gotta go glue that back on. <laughs> I'm just like a mess, a mess. And then I'm on dog duty. Dog duty, right? I'm on dog duty. Anyway, um, I really did enjoy this book. I'm gonna give it four stars, like I said. Um, I liked the characters and kind of like how the hero grew and the heroine grew into themselves. So um, that's all I can really say about it, that I enjoyed it. So yeah, um, I read four books during this fantasy romance vlog. So uh, let me know if you've read or picked up any of these. <laughs>
Kiki. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna leave you there because I think someone wants to cuddle. <laughs> okay, go, 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 go. I gotta say bye. Anyway, um, I guess not. So uh, thank you all so, so much for watching. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. Um, and if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me any sparkle emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I'll see you all soon in my next one. Bye, y'all.